Hi right, guys, um, got an interesting subject off Dale um, relating to dating agencies. And I do stress dating agencies are a bit different to online dating. These guys are cashing in on it big star. And they're overselling it and everything else. The first thing I want to say to any guy or girl out there is you don't need them. You can, if you're looking for somebody in one of these other countries, there is plenty of things online to meet people and spend a bit of time on people. Flying out to somewhere and just visually seeing somebody and connecting and thinking, oh, this, this it, it can always work. And to be honest, if it's, it's through one of these dating agencies, they seem very geared for economic reasons um, for themselves and a lot of the people that are on them are for economic reasons, which means you're less likely to meet somebody like a doctor or somebody else that's quite simply um, capable of looking after themselves. Now, when, you, when I went through this video, and you, I do recommend watching, it's a bit cringy in some places, the Thailand side seemed very, very financial gain all the way through. And to be honest, it was a bit sad for the guy in the sense that he doesn't need to do any of this garbage. If you just flew to Thailand, you will meet people on the street if you wanted to. Same as the Philippines, you will meet people. And the difference between meeting people genuinely is, hello, they're genuine. Um, a lot of the online stuff is a business. You've got people that work for a living that you'll meet genuinely in the street, in the Philippines, whatever, because they're on their way to work or on lunch, whatever. The people you will often find a big chunk of online are sitting on their computers and making money from people like yourself. Whether it's, oh, my child's sick or whatever, it's all about the money. You're more likely to meet those types of people online. Now, I just want to stress that out there because when you look at the Thailand bit, there was a case of not only did the agency want a load of cash, but also when he actually met a girl he liked, the next thing is the family are hitting him for the cash. They want to basically sell sell the uh, the girl to the to the guy, and that's where he said that nah, this ain't working. Um, well, the first thing is the postman, so he, he's not exactly uh, full of cash, but you'd have to be an idiot to even get roped into that sort of setup. Um, you don't need it, and you don't need the agency at all. The agency doesn't do a thing for you. What you'd be better off spending your time and money on is probably a good, good laptop and getting on Facebook groups and things like that. So if you do need things like visa processing, marriage certificates, or all that wedding planning, whatever, there'll be people that can do it. And do you know what the difference is? Instead of somebody sitting there with the dollar signs in their eyes, you're dealing with people that have already gone through the processes and have the experience and knowledge of saying, don't go with them. If you go to this hotel, and do, do the wedding through them, the meal's free, the free entertainment, whatever. They, they, they already have gone through this and done the research and gone through the processes. The same with immigration and everything. There was people already out there. There's a lot of stuff in this that wasn't even covered on immigration, which is an absolute pick of a job at the minute. Um, but the point being is the Thailand side I found very cringeworthy in the sense that, oh, there's 100 women there, you pick the woman. It's like... That's not a relationship, and it's, it's it's too visually focused as well. I mean, you're walking in a room with a load of women. There's no background to them or whatever. Maybe I'm maybe it's because I'm a bit more um, I'm more stressed on what people's abilities and capabilities and having a conversation. You know, the basic stuff <laughs> than uh, physical attraction, although. Yeah, although I haven't dated any ugly women, it's just a, the fact is that it's my, I'm, I want to know the person, so that might be more me. But at the same time, I do find that like going to a nightclub, not being funny, you go to a nightclub for a one-night stand. You don't go to a nightclub for a long-term relationship. Um, but anyway, so I found the Thailand thing a bit weird and not my... I, I would never even contemplate that sort of setup. Um especially when like you've got the family extorting money and the women on there will also be women that are purely economic. There'd be very, there'd be very few of them that had thought, you know what, 
I've got a nice job and whatever, but um, I'll, I, I'll try this dating agency and they want me to come along because I might find a foreign husband. Because even in there, they're asking, are any of these guys handsome or whatever? And it was like, there was no positive response off any of the women. But so what? You know, <laughs> they did they. Um, a lot of people are going out on a night out and it's amazing how amazing a woman can look after 10 times. But, but anyway, it's a bit different in the morning. But the, the, the point being is, for a relationship, I did find it a bit weird. There, there wasn't enough connection of that there. I don't like the way it was set up purely for cash. Um, it's not It's not something I... And I'm glad to say the Philippines doesn't do that. And if you are caught doing that, I think they'll arrest you for it because it's illegal. Um, but... I do think you can meet genuine people anyway. If you're going to give one of these agencies stupid money, you know what? Just fly somewhere. If you, if you were looking for somebody from a specific area, region or whatever, just fly there for two weeks. Go on holiday. Spend the money on yourself. You know, at the end of the day, you were have your holiday. Don't go out there with a the mindset of, like, going to buy some cattle from the market. Why do you think something would fail with that sort of mentality? Um, I mean, myself, I wasn't even interested in the relationship. We we just sort of hit it off over nine months. Uh, it wasn't just like bang, oh yeah, I know. It was just a bit random for us. But I don't think if you force things, it helps. And I don't think, uh, like if you connect with somebody genuinely and you build a relationship online and visit a few times and stuff like that, Paper. that is going to work much, much better. Um, then something like this is forced, forced like a cattle market. Now, there's a young lad on there in his 20s that went to Ukraine because Ukraine's got four times as many women as, as men. Um, there's probably probably more than that now with Russia or Ukraine thing. Uh, but the, the point being is a lot of Ukrainian women, um, they want a better relationship. They're not... They're not stupid women. They're not uneducated women. A lot of them have good educations, etc. Um, but they want a better life. And myself, I do. F <laughs> I'll get in trouble here because I do know Ukrainian and Russian women. Um, but I do find they're a bit more driven. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, so if they meet a husband that doesn't meet expectations, I would not expect it to. Uh, be long term but at the same time if the guy is good and the woman gets on fantastic relationship I've got some friends that are married to some Poles and they're all happily married because it's not it's not monetary because once they get past that you know once they like move to the UK for example they got the house and the the picturesque lifestyle that was in their head um, they're content a lot of people are content, but I do find a lot of the Russians a bit more difficult to deal with. Um, Ukrainians I find friendly, but it's very, very close. A lot of uh, Russians in Ukraine as well. So that, that's that's my version of that. But I did find with the, the young lad, he he went out there and within a couple of days he had had some sexual relations with the woman who went there to me. And then suddenly he's like, oh, I can meet other women because suddenly... I assume he was celibate up to that point because he suddenly become 10 foot tall. Um, I've got to admit, the girl he was with was way above, punching way above him. You know, she's much, much more attractive than he would normally find in the UK. <coughs> Nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, the, that's not the problem. The, the fact is, I think he was more interested in playing the field once he'd woken up to the fact he could meet all these women. And... <laughs> Which is fine, but at the same time, these women are looking for a partner not to be bedded on mass, you know. So I found him a bit, a bit of a warning sign for women in Ukraine. <laughs> Stay away from this guy. Um, there's a guy on there as well that's married to a Thai girl that went back to the UK, moved to the UK, and would be without son for a year because all the visa fiascos you get with the UK. But I can understand, A, the, the visa issues with those sort of relationships because they're new. Uh, but the other side of that being is she had already been abandoned by her previous partner 
just after the child was born. That is something I've seen so many times in Asia. Because it's all right for a guy to dump a girlfriend that's pregnant and wander off. The girl will really struggle to get into another relationship because culturally, a lot of guys and families aren't interested in a woman that has a child from a previous marriage. It's just something in the culture. In the West, we're more open to it. I think it's been probably down at the 50% divorce rate out of the UK or whatever it is today. Um, in the same way as other countries, we're, we're nations of broken marriages. <laughs> so, so for having kids in a relationship, it is not an issue. You know, it's, it's become part of normal life. But for a lot of these girls, they end up having to bring up the child on their own, pay their way and everything else, while the guy's off drinking and gambling and doing what he was doing before. They just move up, move on. There's no, uh, nobody's going to push the welfare side. They're just like, see ya. And that's what happens a lot. And I've seen that in the Philippines. I've seen that from Thailand. I've seen it from other countries as well in the region. So she... I is locked into the marriage in a way that some people will say, well, it's purely economic. It's not. It's much, much bigger than that. The first thing, I mean, she brings up herself, it's the way Western men treat their women. And what is what she's talking about is that a lot of Western guys know that they're going into a relationship with a woman that will dedicate herself to the husband. If it's, if it's, set, if it's set up right, you know, in the fact that it's a good relationship, um, with that mindset and the fact that culturally, like the Philippines, Vietnam, just many places, the women take responsibility for their husbands and will look after their husbands. At the same way, they appreciate anything that's done for them, which is why they, they are happy with that. Having somebody that can not, not only financially support them, but also have that drive to to make it a real relationship, take care of them, ask how they are. It's often stuff they don't normally do in their own cultures. So they, they appreciate it to the point that when they go into a marriage blind, they only got a picture which may actually be very obscure and it's something I've dealt with over the years, trying to explain to people that they need to explain to their partner. They are not rich. You know, like the postman, the postman couldn't afford to pay that family even if he wanted to because um, they would just keep adding to it anyway, and he was smart enough to walk away from it. But the, the point being is they, have, they act as if it's nothing to you, because for them, the, I mean, as the, the woman from Thailand explained, um, you can earn six pounds in the UK in one hour. In Thailand, six pounds is a day's pay. But obviously there's no connection to that being, well, but how much is a restaurant meal in Thailand compared to here? How much is the house rent from here to here? You know, genuine comparisons, they don't see all of that because a lot of time it doesn't affect a lot of them because the husband in many relationships remains the breadwinner and this is another thing that ends up as a problem and the women send their money back home. So all the electric bill, gas bill, the mortgage, whatever, can often become the burden of the guy while the woman sends all the money back home. One of the things I will say is you break that bind as quick as you can. If you can, you need to get control of that early on. That's why I say one of the things I do recommend is focusing on the fact of going, how much is it to rent a house here? It costs six times as much here. So you need to earn six times more to pay for that. So don't assume there's a direct conversion. The cost of a vehicle, the cost of fuel, the cost of this, cost of that. And you get the comparisons going. And you need to get that sort of real aid through your partner so that they understand that the, there's realistic costs here. Because I know some guys do actually struggle with the amount of living cost. Um, but their partner is saying, well, I need to send this for my brother. I need to send this. There is no reason to be sending for any extended relative if they're capable of working the way I see things. If the brother wants to start a business and is capable of doing it and will do it, then fine, invest in the business. But don't carry him for the next 20 years. 
Um, I've seen enough lazy people in the Philippines. I know there's one that uses somebody's car and he'll complain that, that there's no oil in it and things, yet it's only him using it because the owner's not even in the country. Um, there's a lot of lazy gits out there and I do recommend break that bind at day one. If they want to send some money back home, some is like, fine, some. As they just explained to you, it takes all days to earn six, do uh, six, six pounds. So why do they need your entire salary for the week? Because they don't earn that. If you give one day salary, that's still more than they would have earned anyway. And that's why I say you've got to get into that digging into it to actually turn around and say, well, no, because we have expenses. We have our costs. Not everything goes back to whatever, especially if it's going to get wasted, which a lot of it does. Um, a friend of ours has got some family members that are all alcoholics. And she's already said that she couldn't send money back to her relatives um, because they would die. One of her relatives... Um, Close relatives dying from alcohol poisoning, and the the others are going the same way. So feeding their habit by going, well, they won't have to go out and work because they can just sit under the mango tree with as much tandu eye as they like. It's not going to help them at all. Um, so I, that's another aspect of it. What else did I pick up from it? The whole marriage thing. Be aware that you can do it all yourself. Don't think that you need agencies for any of this. All I recommend is you just do your research. Um, go through different YouTube channels, get information from forum groups and stuff. Go with an open mind, but understand a lot of stuff you hear and see from people can often be mis uh, not misinformed. Let's just say uh, very blinkered is the polite way of putting it. They have it from a very narrow perspective sometimes. It's like when people say to me about why don't I do things like Boracay and that. Well, the Boracay being closed is a prime example. Everybody there was praising it. Very little was actually saying there's a problem there. And that's me. I like to say, look, look at this. There's plenty of people saying it's fantastic. But for me, I'm more concerned about genuine information um, than Kodak Smiles and Paradise Island, like up here, um, because that you expect that anyway. I don't need to sell that bit. My bit I need to get you to understand is keep yourself safe, keep yourself informed, and go with an open mind and realize that you don't have to accept everything at face value. One of the important bits I do recommend is actually turning around and researching things. And if you don't think something's right, I do recommend keeping a notebook. Especially if you think somebody's lying. Because, as you know, lies come undone over the period of time. So if you know them down and start seeing differences by asking the same question more than once, very likely they're lying to you. And a small lie can lead to finding a big problem in the background. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching.